tucha agenda maso no kubajukiza. Uh, by the way, biembo lida, obabi etubu lida, neba nange wano sibipia. What we preach here is not new. Tubajukiza budukiza. We just remind you. Ate sife tusose. And we are not the first. Jukira anti nomo yomu tukuwebi mkubimule eta kutujukiza. And also remember one of the reasons that bring the Holy Spirit is to remind us. Ngaba antorus tumanyo kuera vila. As human beings, at times we forget. Ne tuva kumulamwa. And we go off course. Kati enso ngaruachi tuwa koro kusela okulaba nga tukujukiza. Moyo mtukuvu ya chile eta tukujukize. That's why we decided to keep on reminding you and the Holy Spirit brought it that we should always remind you. The way you must walk with our Lord. We are amidst a battle. Let me request those here to take your seats because you'll get tired. We are in the midst of a battle. And we are also in a journey. For any sojourner, you walk and you reach a time and you feel you're tired. And as a human being, there are things that we meet and encounter that cause us to depart from the theme and we leave aside God. And because we haven't all been perfected, and we are still in the journey of transformation. Every day the Holy Spirit will bring back such messages to keep on reminding us what we ought to do. Amen. 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 There are words that I usually hear, and while reading the Bible, I found a scripture that resembles them. One day, Mrs. Birunji Margaret Sentamu preached about stuntedness. When she gets time, she will preach to you and inform you about being stunted because she knows a lot about it. It is a kind of fire you put among the others, but it does firewood, but it doesn't light up the fire. It is very bad for you to be a stunted born again. Yet it is possible. Because she knows knows more about it, she will explain what makes a born again to be stunted. For those who prepare food, when you prepare food and don't put enough fire, that food does not get ready. So if you fail to give enough fire to the food and it doesn't get ready, however much you struggle, it can never change from that state. I can easily assume that what makes the food not to get ready the way it's supposed to be is failure to give it enough fire. So even in life, someone may be negligent and reluctant concerning godly matters, and they become stunted. Because the Bible 
Saidiye akujira yo darana akuta. What is so shocking is that to God, if you don't have a side, you're neither hot or cold. The Lord will spit you out, he can, and then you're no longer his. Bible the Bible says that he will vomit you out. Uh, in life, if you give birth to a child who does not grow, that child is referred to as being stunted. It is a result of the bad, poor feeding. When the parents did not take good care of the child, they did not provide well for the child, and the child becomes stunted. And because being born again is being birthed, is being birthed for the second time. There is a group of born agains who are stunted. It is a bad sign. Some people for such people, it is only God who never fails, who can help them to get out of the state of being stunted. So, of all the stages I've mentioned, I pray to God that you are not one of any of them. According to the plan of God, He takes us from power and He takes us into power. He takes us from glory and He takes us further into glory. That implies the plan of God is always to move us further and take us ahead. Make a decision to continue growing in our Lord. Amen. Amen. And there is a word in the Bible that was spoken by Paul while teaching his son Timothy. First Timothy chapter 6 verse 5. He talks about people who are argumentative. The friction between the men of corrupt mind. Their mind is corrupt. The truth has been taken away from them. And they think that godliness is a means to financial gain. It is also bad to be part of such a group. The problem with these people is that they are so argumentative. They cling on the wrong thing. They give excuses for the mistakes. They give excuses for the weaknesses. They are not ready to pay the price to transform their lives. They change scriptures to, to work according to their desires. According to, the, to Paul and his writing, he shows that for these people, they exchanged godliness or the fear of God to financial gain. That for someone who fears the Lord, they must have a financial gain. 
And they would say that how you consider that someone fears the Lord, it is according to the blessing they have. And in this generation, this is paramount. Then you are not man of God. People assume that if you don't have so many tangible things, and they expect that you have a curse. And they always say that if you do any act of righteousness, God must reward you for the act of righteousness. Done. They instill it into the people that for you, every time you do an act of righteousness, you must be rewarded for it. Amen. Amen. But I want to tell you to read the Bible carefully. One day, still according to the words of the mockers, I asked the Lord, why am I like this? How come I've not touched so many tangible things? Is there a problem? Do I have a curse? And within me a thought came. And it takes me back to into the whole Bible. That go on checking of all the prophets and the priests. And go back and read in the Bible of all the prophets and the priests who of them left anything in the city, maybe a storage building or an arcade. You'll talk about Abraham, but he was in three categories. He was a priest, Kabaka, a king, Atenga Nabi. and also a prophet. You'll talk about David. He was also falling in those Na three categories. But go to the five that work in the five-fold ministry where we operate. If God was paying back tangible things, Paul would have left a lot of treasures on the earth. That doesn't mean that God cannot bless you. But it's not the weighing scale to use that you fear the Lord because he has blessed you. The fear of the Lord is not financial gain. Fearing the Lord is obeying the word of God and doing his will. Yalabangache Teri chigambo chonna chia tule gira kuwele. 
There is no word he has commanded us to be. That he has not considered that it's possible. Whatever he saw that it was hard, he gave us the help of the Holy Spirit. He considered what prepares us to be good citizens in his kingdom. The habits of the kingdom of God. It is the character that reveals his divinity. So let us not take it that the Lord was causing us to miss out. The Lord doesn't wish well. Whatever he says, he said that do not touch this. He saw the trouble therein. When he told Adam, do not eat of this tree. He knew the trouble therein if he had eaten of it. And when Adam refused to listen to the word of God, and he took the deception of Satan, what happened after? He harvested what he was not meant to harvest. Whenever you hear the Lord telling you, do not touch this, he is preventing you from the trouble that he has foreseen in it. It is not bad governance. It is love. It is like a parent or the head of a family at home. They have rules and regulations governing the family. According to the way he desires it to be. They have morals they, they want to live by. And when the people see the people of the family, they see the head of the family through them. Whenever any of the family members makes an error, the blame is placed on the head of the family. Whenever we do anything that is contradictory to the will of God, we bring abuse to our God. That's why the Bible says that whatever our eyes see and we ought to do it, let us do it for the glory of God. So how can we help this group? whose wisdom was corrupted. The Bible has said that they learn every day, but they cannot reach on mount to knowing the truth. Why? Because the truth has been taken away from them. They were given deceit. So that's the problem. That some people join church. But the first gospel they've received. The foundation that was laid. To undo that foundation and you put them on the right foundation. That person should have an obedient and listening heart. And when they are ready to obey what they are being taught and put it into practice, and it becomes part and parcel of their life. So Timothy 3 verse 6, Paul again reminds Timothy. Those people who cause others to, to have corrupt wisdom. 
abo gera ko bwati mbukubangwa kwabo be bantu abasensera mu nyumba ne banyaga abakazi abasirusiru abazitowerero ebibi ebinji abafugibo okwegomba kutalimu abai gaburi jo ne batainza enaku zonna okutuka kukutegerera dalama mazima second timothy 36 they are the kind of they are the kind who warm their way into the homes and gain control over weak willed women who are loaded down with sins and are swayed by all kinds of evil desires, always learning but never able to acknowledge the truth. There is a category of such people. And their life is full of sin. That even if you struggle to teach them, you'll never teach them to the level of knowing the truth. Verse 7 says, always learning but never able to acknowledge the truth. And he gives an example. Janice and Jambres, they opposed Moses before Pharaoh. Verse 8. Just as Janus and Jambres opposed Moses, so also these men opposed the truth men of depraved minds who as far as the faith is concerned are rejected. There is one author who said that their judgment has already been done. So they don't care. They yeah. are there, they have no purpose. They are just enjoying the world. They fulfill that Luganda proverb. Amen. Amen. But you and I are not like that. You yearn to know the truth and put it into action. So how can we help such people? And which area should we focus at if we are to walk the journey of transformation? You must be determined. Kumalirira. Determination. Nawagani tu muandi somu ya kose se chigambo kwezi be chimiu. I told you that one one author said that you must be determined. Yaliruka yali according to chigambo via mukama wa Yesu Kristo. That was Luke and he was giving reference of the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amuruka kumi na bili orunirwas metan. Luke 12, 35. He said that be dressed ready for service and keep your lamps burning. Be dressed and let your lamps burn. You must be emphatic you must be careful. You must carefully watch every issue. Amen. Amen. Don't be swayed by all winds of doctrine. Read the Bible. Learn how to pray. Katonda the Lord will help you. If, if anyone comes with any doctrine of swaying away from the truth, you'll be able to discern and you get out of that deceit. 
And another writer, I think it was Peter. Let me try to search for that word. May God help me to see it. We shall get it another time. I want us to go where we ended yesterday. We ended in Romans 12 verse 2. And it was telling us not to be conformed to the pattern of the world. What pleases me about the Bible is that from Genesis, it shows us that the generation we are in is corrupted. The ways the world runs things is corrupted. What the world desires, it is not the desire of God. So, and I told you that to be able to mount to this level, we must first consider the price we pay. It is in verse 1. Romans 12. He begins with parental words of counseling. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in the view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, this is your spiritual act of worship. We go with the word to offer our bodies. To who? To God. The Bible says that our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. First Corinthians 6.15 what? This is what he says. Do you not know that your bodies are the members of Christ himself? Shall I then take the members of Christ and unite them with a prostitute? Never. So I want us to consider the level he had reached in understanding God. I want you to consider the way he would guard his body. For the Bible says we are the body of Christ. Amen. Amen. So now he says, do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ himself? So then, Shall I take the members of Christ and unite them with a prostitute? Never. This is a born again who fights a test or a temptation and they overcome. They see they have done something wrong. Like Joseph. When the wife to the master desired to have him, there is a word he spoke that I love and it will help you. Genesis 39. It makes sense. Let us begin from verse 8. Naye 
kubanga oli mukazi we kale nyinza ntya echo chenjagala kale nyinza ntya okono ono kwenkani de wanu no kusobya ku katonda echo chechigambo chenjagada ebigambo bibiri the word that i mostly love is this kale nyinza ntya how then could i do such a wicked thing and o sin against god to sin in such a way no and sin against god that is a born again who fights with sin and walks in the journey of perfection amen amen they are not complacent he so it was so wicked. He would have done something abominable. He would have done something so wicked before his God. How can I do such a wicked thing? He considered it a very big sin. When Satan is to make you fall into trouble, he shows you that this is a very small sin. But you have heard how he considered it in the verse. He would have done something very wicked. How can I do such a wicked thing? And someone can take this as an opportunity. But he saw it so wicked and he said, Far be it. And what he did is what I told you that the sin of immorality, you run away from it, he had to run away. If it was the other born again with corrupt wisdom, the one we considered, the one Paul was talking about in his generation. He would have said, This is a great opportunity to sleep in my master's bed. For a quick one, they can even say this is the will, the way of God. And he can even add on a scripture and even say this is what they call lifting someone from the from the soil and you make them sit with the princess. Hallelujah. Amen. I want us to learn from our forefathers. The way they fought evil. The right of Hebrews was not joking. He reminded those that lived in those days Probably he saw that people had started compromising with sin. The verse says that we have not fought with sin to the level of shedding blood. Chapter 12 verse 4, Hebrews. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. You have not resisted sin. Do you think this is a joke? To overcome sin, he has used a very big word. To struggle. The English version brings it out better. Struggle. 
Okuwa kana nechibi. Na kuwa na gana nechibi okulaba. Chona chocha agalo okulaba nga chiku wangula. Na ina uruana okuchi wangula. Struggling with sin. It is also struggling against you, but you're also struggling to overcome it. Ate chizibu. Chibi era mugwe kubange nsigo ya adamu eri. And the problem is that it is in you because you have Adam's seed. It is your responsibility to put off the old self. We are born with sin. That is why we ought to overcome it because it's already in us. And it, it is strongly connected to the flesh. It moves so much in the desires of the flesh. Be careful about the blessing that comes on the physical side. You ought to be careful with it. The sin that will lead to your downfall does not come when it is very clear that it is sin. Just imagine Elisha. I pray to God that that spirit that was promised to us. He prayed for the man and told him to go and immerse himself in Jordan seven times and he was, he was cleansed. But he knew that the time for receiving the gift had not yet come. I pray for you born again. Of all the gifts that are brought to you. Be careful. Be careful. Probably some of them are traps. It could be a connection with the enemy. Amen. Amen. We, to which level have you reached in giving in your body as a living sacrifice that is holy and pleasing? You cannot move in, give, reach a level of a life that is pleasing to God and upright, except if you reach that level of contending with sin. And what will drive you to contend with sin is your love of God with all your heart. Like Matthew 22, verse 27. The Lord ex expects, expects us to be upright in three areas. According to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. This is what he says. First Thessalonians 5, verse 23. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you. That your spirit, your soul, your and your body. That they may be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. All the three parts that make up man. The soul. You may call it your heart. It is a collection of thoughts. <laughs> that is where the trouble is. Because, because another writer was writing the words he had from our Lord when he was speaking. In Mark. Chapter 7. 
He shows us the source of all evil. Verse 20. Mark 7, 20. Mark 7.20, he went on, what comes out of a man is what makes him unclean. For from within, out of men's hearts come evil thoughts. And that is where Paul best. In chapter 12, verse 2. When he said these words, let us read them. Don't cover where we are in Mark. Verse 2. When he said these words, let us read them. Don't cover where we are in Mark. Verse 2. When he said these words, let us read them. Don't cover where we are in do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. And also Paul repeats it in Ephesians. When he's teaching us how to change our birth. Because we were all perverted. No one was pleasing to God. Con so that you put off the old self that rots the body. And also to be renewed in the spirit of your thoughts. How do we become renewed? Through the renewal of our thoughts. How do we renew them? They are renewed by the word of God. And where are we driving them to? Philippians 2.5 This is what he tells us. That your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus. We exchange our thoughts by putting into action the truth in the word of God. Whenever we put into action the truth of the word of God, we are getting the mind of Christ and it becomes a thought unto us. Where we get the character or behavior or the actions. And those who see us. And they will speak the way they spoke about the church of Antioch. They had spent a full year being taught the word of God. They were good students who would learn and put into practice what they've learned. And it becomes the life that they walk in. Acts of the Apostles 11, 26. Verse 26. And when he found him, he brought him to Antioch. For a whole year, Barnabas and Saul met with the church and taught great numbers of people. The disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. <laughs> 
Why? Because they considered them as followers of Christ and not only followers, but even their character looked like that of Christ. Because a disciple learns and copies and does and acts according to what the teacher does. Let me give it to you in the scriptures. While Paul was speaking to his son Timothy, their words he tells him in 2 Timothy chapter 3 let us get to the verse from verse 9. Uh, from verse 10. Therefore, I exhort you, however, know all about my teachings, my way of life, my purpose, faith, patience, love, Endurance, persecution, sufferings. Because this was a disciple. Paul was mentor. And Paul was the mentor. Ate yali spiritual father wa and he was the spiritual father of Timothy. Kati, Timiseo yali wa Paul. So Timothy was a disciple of Paul. Ngaiga okusinzira kubigambo biva muigiriza. And he would learn in regard to the words being taught. And he would learn concerning the character, the way of life, the purpose, the teaching, and everything according to the mentor. The way he would talk. He would always consider the life of his teacher. And that is why he told him this. He, he was training, training him to help people to get hold of the word being taught. In the book of First Timothy, chapter 4, verse 12. Because you Do not let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech in life, in love, in faith, and in purity. He was teaching him the wisdom that can cause him to be, because during those days, for you to be a minister or servant, you must have advanced age. So he would serve amidst the elderly people who would despise him because of his age. And he taught him a way that would help him so that these people would believe in him and they don't despise him. He had to learn that he was meant to overcome them with his acts. Verse 13. Until I come, devote yourself to the public reading of scripture, to preaching and teaching. Do not neglect your gift which was given you through a prophetic message 
when the body of elders laid their hands on you. I love verse 16 most Watch your life and the doctrine. Persevere in them because if you do, you will save both yourself and your hearers. So this is the challenge that you have and we too as your teachers have the challenge. But I want to give you counsel. Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. If you see anyone who is a good teacher, but when their life is not in union with what Christ says, always overlook what they are saying and focus your eyes unto Christ. Overlook the actions. Don't look at what they do. Don't say this person does this and this. Even Bishop so and so did this. If what he did is contrary to the word of God. The Bible says that let us focus our eyes on Christ, the author and perfecter of our faith. But we as the teachers, it's upon us. We the ministers. At every level where you are. If you are to help those people to understand Christ. And also to walk in life as the word of God is. Be a doer of the word. Let your words be likened to your actions and your character and let it be your way of life. Don't be a Pharisee. The one who lays the Lord unto the others. Yet you cannot carry that burden, O Lord. I read a scripture that scared me. It is in Romans 2. You teach others not to steal. Yet you steal from the house. Even the Bible knows that. Amen. Amen. I always want to reserve time for prayer because such words sink so much when we pray. So, I want to conclude by telling you it is your responsibility. We only support you. I'm also fighting on my own. So when I come and give to you the word of God, you also need to go and struggle on your own. Take away being slothful. Don't say that how come so and so did this. Am I better than so and so? True, truthfully, you can be better than them. If you make a decision to do what is right before the Lord, the title may be greater, but, but before God, you are better than him or her. Amen. I wish you victory. And it's possible because we are fighting on the right side. For Christ overcame.
And he's the one leading us. So we are fighting on the victorious side. He is there to help us. He is there to enable us. Every day who speak with your life, I usually tell people, train yourself to get that personal time with the Lord. To read the word of God. To meditate upon it. And also pray. Even if you don't have prayer requests. But when you're there during the time for the Lord. And you remain silent in the presence of God. You begin meditating upon his goodness. And you have questions that you're asking yourself when you need the Holy Spirit to answer you. The Holy Spirit will begin to speak with you what concerns you. The Lord desires so much to begin with myself to transform me. Then he will use me to go and transform others. May God bless you.